Hi. So just today, a few hours ago, uh, we got to have a look at uh, the Chandrayaan 2 craft, which is ready. All of the testing has been done. Uh, we saw the, the orbiter, the lander and the rover. And then also we had a press conference where the chairman, uh, Dr. Shivan, revealed a lot of uh, details about the upcoming mission. Uh, so we spoke. The uh, the chairman spoke a lot about how exactly the craft will travel from Earth to the Moon. So we had a detailed uh, debriefing about uh, uh, how many days it's going to take and how much fuel uh, will be spent and uh, those kind of details. Uh, the chairman also mentioned that uh, this is sort of like like a new vertical that they're doing in ISRO and this will be called space science. So this will basically deal with uh, this vertical will deal with planetary and interplanetary missions. Of course, there have been three so far, even though we are just going to the moon, it's still considered a planetary or interplanetary mission as it's not just satellites that are uh, orbiting the Earth. So we had Chandrayaan-1 and uh, Mangalyaan-1 officially ca uh, called Mars Orbiter mission, of course. And and then now we're launching Chandrayaan 2. The new and updated launch date is July 15th. The launch is expected to happen at 2.51 a.m. So if you're in Chennai and you are in the habit of watching launches at 9 a.m., um, that's, that's not going to happen this time. Uh, the launch window is from July 9th to 16th. Uh, so the chairman did clarify that they have like a little bit of about 10 minutes every day to launch. But for now, the tentative launch date is July 15th uh, at 2.51 a.m. And we're hoping that this is the last update. As you might be aware, ISRO has been putting out a stream of updates about Chandrayaan 2, which was supposed to launch a long time ago, actually, and has been constantly uh, pushed over. So I'll be answering a few questions about all of the, the details uh, that we have so far. What are the major objectives? So one of the first objectives uh, when it comes to any mission is demonstrating that the space agency is capable of doing that mission. So Chandrayaan-1 and Mangalyaan-1, for example, were, dem were purely demonstrators. So these are engineering demonstrators. ISRO was able to show that it has the capacity to go to the moon uh, and insert a craft into orbit and the same thing for Mars. And therefore, it was not a, like a very scientific mission. Now, this mission will actually be a scientific mission apart from demonstrating that we're capable of landing on the moon. The, uh, the mission, as you might be aware, has an orbiter, a lander and a rover. So we have not landed anything on any other body before, uh, both Chandrayaan-1 as well as Mangalyaan were just orbiters. So we'll, we will be demonstrating landing and roving. Uh, apart from that, there are scientific objectives, a lot of which have to deal with discovering new signs uh, at the south pole of the moon, which is where we're landing. We're landing in between two craters. So we'll be sort of digging uh, the lunar soil called the regolith. We'll be finding out uh, its mineral composition. And because uh, the, the so south pole of the moon faces away from the sun much more than the north pole does, there is more quantity of ice, water ice on the south pole of the moon. So we'll be studying a lot of, uh, uh, you know, we'll sort of like dig and understand uh, the presence of water ice there. There are also going to be seismometers, so we'll be understanding uh, lunar quakes. We've had a lot of, uh, a ton of new uh, uh, studies from data from the Apollo era where, uh, you know, astronauts left uh, seismometers on the moon. So we're learning a lot about lunar quakes right now. Uh, they're caused by different mechanisms. So that is another thing that we will hope to study. Uh, these are primarily the main objectives of the mission. Um, the next question is, what is the cost of the mission? So the entire mission itself, the chairman said, costed 603 crores to the taxpayer. Um, of this, um, there were, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, 80% of the cost was footed by the industries that were involved in um, uh, doing this mission, of course. Uh, and uh, that, that was about 120 industries, including academia. And uh, then there was the GSLV rocket, which costed 375 crores, uh, and uh, this in involved 500 industries. Um, the next is, how do they contact back to Earth? Well, 
so the moon is tidally locked to the earth which means the same side of the moon always faces the earth so for us to communicate it's really easy if we plant a craft on the side that faces us then there is just direct sending of signals whatever kind of signals um so the the part of the lunar south pole that our craft is going to land at will be in direct contact with the earth it's something that we can see the location is something that we can see from the earth as well as you know the orbiter as it goes around the moon will be in contact with the earth so it's going to send back signals directly both the lander as well as the orbiter will communicate with the earth this is unlike uh, the chinese rover which is on the far side of the moon from earth we cannot see the far side so the chinese rover relies on communicating with its own orbiter which then communicates with earth uh, over here our rover does not communicate directly with earth uh, the rover called pragyan will communicate with the lander that's called vikram uh, so vikram lander and the orbiter communicates directly with us and there is a on an average there's a delay of about 1.25 seconds which is not not as bad as compared to mangalyaan but of course when it comes to rocket science or planetary missions every millisecond precision does matter uh, chandrayaan 2 is an advanced version of the previous chandrayaan 1 mission which was launched about 10 years ago how so like i said earlier chandrayaan 1 mission was a demonstrator it was a tech demonstrator and it had an impactor uh, because at that point we were really new when it came to exploring just outside of our planet isro excels at launching satellites our our rockets are some of the best uh, and most tenacious in the world but we were very new when it comes to planetary missions so chandrayaan 1 was just a purely engineering demonstrator um, not too much science in it so a few months into the mission we even lost connectivity with it and we actually thought we've completely lost the orbiter and it turned out nasa discovered the orbiter much later and it's still in orbit around the moon um and chandrayaan 1 had an impactor which is uh, something that is flung with force at the lunar surface so just the moon's gravity pulls it down and then it smashes into the surface and then once it did it um pushed aside the lunar soil when it impacted and it revealed white water ice underneath so chandrayaan 1 sort of was instrumental in the discovery of water on the moon chandrayaan 2 is a science mission it is not just a demonstrator at all uh, it's not bare bones it's not a skeletal mission it's much more expensive and it has a number of scientific payloads including one from nasa all of the other payloads are indian there are eight payloads on the orbiter there are three indian payloads and one nasa payload on the lander and then there are two payloads on the rover as well so it's a much more sophisticated uh, mission than chandrayaan 1 um what about the discovery of water yeah so we have we know that there is water on the lunar surface just underneath the soil and uh, what we're doing right now is sort of going and studying there and the lunar south pole is really exciting because this is a place that has not been uh, explored by anybody robots or humans before all of the apollo missions that landed on the moon as well as russian missions that landed on the moon sort of landed in the equatorial patch so to say so nothing uh, towards the north pole and nothing towards the south pole chinese mission is on the far side of the moon again that's unique in itself and then our south pole mission is also going to be uh, unique um how does the engine how does the i'm sorry i'm not able to read this um are all the tests complete what is the current status of the mission well uh, so so far from what we understood and we got to actually see the craft in the assembly room today so all of the tests are complete the final tests that are conducted are usually vibration and acoustic tests so those are complete at the moment uh, and uh, what they said is either tomorrow or day after the orbiter is expected to be transported to shri hari kota uh where the rocket you know is going to get ready and it'll be moved to the launch pad uh, then on the 7th of july they are again moving the vikram lander uh, to the launch pad the rover is already placed inside the lander at this moment is soft landing an issue how is luna dust going to affect the sensors well soft landing is of course it's not an issue but it's of course extremely difficult and that is the objective uh, that we have right now uh, soft landing has only been done three times on the moon before will be the fourth country to do it just a couple of months ago israel a, a private company from israel tried to land 
a lander on the moon uh, but unfortunately it failed so we're, we're very used to planetary missions we we hear about nasa and esa's missions all the time and we're just so used to talking about these missions uh, in our everyday vocabulary that we sort of tend to forget exactly how challenging these missions are so soft landing is of course it's a, it's an extremely um uh, complicated technical feat that uh, india has to accomplish and uh, everyone's watching us and isro is quite reliable so the chairman today at the press conference also said that uh, they're fairly certain because they've left no stone unturned so they're fairly certain that they will achieve success and they uh, we've demonstrated with mangalyan one also that you know we're capable of doing more difficult things on the first try But let's see does it land what is the target lifespan of the lander and rover can they go beyond it well so the the target uh, the lifespan of these three components are uh, the orbiter will stay in orbit and work for about a year uh and of course a year is the minimum requirement uh, they are always built to be more sturdy and they will uh, the orbiter will function for a lot longer the unfortunately on the moon what happens is that because there's no atmosphere there is nothing to protect against uv and other forms of radiation from the sun so anything that's exposed to the sun receives a really really high dose of radiation as a result when we send up electronic equipment uh, unless they are in shadow they would fry and a lot of the times when we want to do difficult science we do send up a uh, craft exactly to locations where there is really bright sun unfortunately uh, so that's that's what we're doing with vikram lander and pragyan rover both of them are going to be on the lit part of the moon as a result their circuits are going to get slowly fried so the expected life span um, as of today is 14 days and uh, we'll see 14 to 15 days is sort of uh, how long we expect it to happen uh i do not i personally do not think that the the lander or the rover would exceed their lifespan because i mean radiation is a really hard enemy to contend with but at the most maybe a day or so i don't expect it to be any longer than that um is isro vertical uh, vertical landing uh, is isro working on it so we have heard rumors about btvl vertical takeoff vertical landing but we don't have anything that's officially confirmed so we we can't be sure if vertical landing is something that isro is working on uh, but reusable rockets yeah there is there is a solid talk of uh, isro working on reusable rockets again there is no official word on this and uh, yeah what do you say about spacex it's the the same thing uh, isro is a very cost effective launcher even at the moment as compared to a lot of international counterparts but of course reusable rockets are the way to go and they are the future of space launches so that sort of uh, where we would hopefully one day see isro heading uh but even if they are working on it seriously nothing has been made public yet um the upcoming missions are chandrayaan 2 and of course there might be another mission to mars and then there is a a mission to venus later for 2023 and then of course there is the human space flight mission um called gaganyaan so that's that's also sort of uh, going on uh i that's that's all the time that we have today thank you so much for tuning in uh this is sandhya ramesh from bengaluru for the print science if you have any questions please tweet to us at the print science or me at sandy greens thank you